Emma O'Carroll, a lot of positives to take from the recent game against Featherstone. Now you've had time to review the game. What encourages you? What excites you from that performance on Sunday home? Yeah, I spoke to you during the week just about us being consistent and, and backing up the performance. So I think I think that's the the pleasing one for me. It's something that the group referenced when I first came in. You know, at the, for us to take that next step as a as a group and a club is to to, to back up performances, which uh, I think we did for large parts. That was obviously the message going into that game after the, the win against Halifax. You must be pleased though that that message is cutting through to the players and, and they're delivering on those messages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's, it, it comes from our, our practice and you know our, our performances during the week. The, the lads are, are really engaged and, and training really, really hard, but smart as well. So um, you know it seems to be transferring at, at the moment, although there's still huge areas for improvement. You say there's areas for improvement. What do those areas for improvement look like? What would you like to see improve? Well, I think I think we've nailed like the effort side of things, which is which is really pleasing. I think it's just now you know having elements of concentration to that. You know, certainly defensively. You know, not not switching off. We're we're disappointed how we've conceded some tries in the last couple of games. You know, when you look on the the flip side of that, some of the the pressure that we've been under defending our line with, you know, a man in the bin and, and not conceding, but then we're, we're kind of switch off and lose a little bit of connection and then we, we've been hurt for it so look that's that's not perfect but we're, we're doing some great things and I'm really happy for the group we just want to be better in, in that department. Three games into the, the new championship season are you happy overall with how things are currently progressing? Yeah yeah I am yeah I am and it, that's credit to the to the group for, for how they're, they're performing and preparing each week so yeah we're happy our, our feet are firmly on the ground we, we know there's, there's areas of improvement which we're you know we're working on every day when we're when we're in, um, and we're confident that we we can get better. So that, that's exciting. Talking to players in the post-match interviews after that game against Ferguson, a common theme does appear to be getting highlighted by them, and that is this sort of improved culture at the club, and you know how that is benefiting them moving forward. Oh, that that's good. It's pleasing to hear. Um, but that is credit credit to them. Like they, they've really brought bought into. It's what we're trying to do this year, and I believe that started to the back the back end of last year as well. So, that as a coach, hearing that 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 is really pleasing. But the the credit does have to go down down to them. You know, they're, they're a group with you know high standards, and they, they work extremely hard. So, it's important that we we keep hold of that, and um, you know we try to perform to our best every week. And how important is is that buying? Not just the buying from the mainstay Bradford players, but players like Harvey Wilson, Conor Carr's performance at the weekend, you know, you've got players from other clubs coming in and, and they're immediately buying into that culture and, and performing for you. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two bits to that. I think, you know, we've been really lucky with the, the players that we've been able to bring in. First and foremost, they've brought fantastic energy um, to the group and, you know, they've, they've really settled in. And what's helped them with that, secondly, is, is just our players and, and our how welcoming they are when they come in. Um, you know, I never worry when we have to, to bring someone in, they're, they're brought straight into the group. Um, you know, and I don't have to push that. We've got some good people here, not just in terms of the players, the staff as well. They're really accommodating and, and making feel at home. So I'm, I'm confident when, when players do go back to the Super League clubs, they, they speak highly of us as a, as a group and as, as a people as well. Just one final mention from Sunday's game against Featherstone after the game. You brought all the backroom staff, the non-playing players, the, the volunteers onto the pitch, uh, and you took the picture uh, of those people who yeah. took the scoreboard. <laughs> uh, does that kind of just reaffirm their importance that it's not just about the on-field players, that you know the, the importance runs right through the club from the volunteer kit man, you know, right through to Jordan Lilly who might win the game of a drop goal? Yeah, well, well. First of all, I didn't know it was done in, in front of the scoreboard. I wouldn't want it to be disrespectful in any way. That that's not what we're doing it for. It's just really important. And look, it's not it's not my idea. I got it off off uh, off Steve here at, at Catalan. You know the the importance of valuing your, your your staff who help you perform and and help you prepare the best you possibly can each week. And it's something we want to make a big deal of. There's um, there's people who unfortunately work on that that photo. I didn't want to take it, but I ended up just getting it thrown to me and uh, look I speak about us being being humble all the time we want to do that for the right reasons it's not to be disrespectful to our opposition or anything like that it's so that we're valuing our, our staff and um, you know the external staff around the club so that's really important to me I'm, I'm very lucky we've got some good people here who, who help me immensely and help the squad and um, at the minute for the last two games you know we've we've reaped the benefit for that so it's important we give them some recognition 
What's the message to the, the players this week? Is it similar to last week? You know, we've had two good wins now. We just need to stay focused, show to lose respect, back it up again. Yeah, yeah, consistency again uh, and, and perform. It's about making some improvements. We know where we want to be better. Um, I think our practices have been good. We've, we've not been able to get on the field uh, due to the weather, but the, the session and the, the application the players had on uh, Tuesday was fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing them do that again tonight. Um, and yeah, it's just about backing it up and, and not getting bored and you know buying into to working hard. Toulouse are a, a fantastic outfit who, who had a difficult game and will want to respond. Um, and I know I spoke to Sylvan last year when they, they played here, he was really disappointed with their performance, so they'll, they'll want to respond. Are you expecting, after that sort of shock defeat to Swinton, a uh, massive response and uplift from someone who was his side on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. I would have expected that anyway, to, to be honest with you, regardless of the, the result before. Um, you know, they're, they're a full town team, they've got some wonderful players in there, and you know, a good coach in, in Sylvan who will be disappointed in that game last week, so they'll, they'll want to respond, and we just need to make sure that we kind of take that out of our hands and we. We look after our own performance and, and what we want to get out of the game. No secret when Bradford play Toulouse, it's always uh, an eventful, fiery, feisty type of fixture. They do have a lot of physicality, not more so than your Lambert Belness. Um, on the edges, Guy Armitage, you're, you're, you're expecting a real tough physical game. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're very passionate, then they work extremely hard. You know, you throw Harrison Hansen into that, Marion as well, who, who you know, very similar to Adi last week, he's got a lot of ball ball playing him and we rely on him heavily. So I'll work on this year, you know, dynamite and, and really competitive and we'll try and get under his skin as well. So they've got quality throughout. Um, but again, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at the opposition, but we're solely focusing on where we want to be better from the, the Featherston and Halifax game and, and making sure more importantly that we hold on to some of the things that we were good at. Connor Carr obviously got the man of the match on on Sunday with his uh, performance. It was a, an initial two week loan. What's the latest with Connor Carr? Yeah, he's, he's still here. We, we, you know, we'll probably have some conversations with, with Huddersfield. We, you know, we've ended up losing Jaden Myers. We're not sure how long we'll lose him for. We're lucky we get um, Josh Tafu back this week, but we're, we're still lacking some depth throughout our squad. And again, I mentioned you know Harvey Wilson and Connor before the the energy that they bring. And, you know, you could see that he competed for everything, and we ended up getting some results off the back of it as well. So he's a he's a great kid. Um, I really enjoy working with him. He's he was a bit quiet when he first came, but I think he's opening up a, a touch now. Aidan said to me, him and Fenny were saying the other day, they've never heard him speak as much, so I dread to think how quiet he was <laughs> at Huddersfield. But um, no, he's good. Looks like he's enjoying his, his time here and he's certainly, uh, certainly adding value. You mentioned Jaden Myers is out. What, what's up with Jaden? Uh, he, he, he came off, well, he didn't come off. He, he came When he came off the, the field against Featherstone, he was having a look with the physio and I thought he was all right because obviously he'd finished the game. but. He left in a boot, so he had a scan yesterday. Yeah, we'll get the results back later on this evening. So um, we'll assess that and see where he's at. We're hopeful it's not not too too concerning. Obviously, you know, a huge positive that he finished the game, but he, he looks quite sore at the minute. So we'll get an answer on him. One of the questions I was going to ask, obviously, <laughs> prior to knowing about Jaden, was obviously Ben Blackmore's back training, George Tafu was back. You've got some uh, welcome headaches, but that adversity appears to have uh, struck again. Yeah, yeah, and credit to Ben. He's uh, very similar to Reby. He's come back early, he's worked hard. You know, credit to him and the medical staff for, for getting him in a position there. We're, we're not going to rush him back. It's looking like he might go and play at Rochdale this week to, to get a game. We were due to play him in the reserves, but we've no reserve game. Um, we've missed Ben. You know, we've really missed him. So it's important that he goes and gets a game somewhere and then he's in contention to, to play. On the loan front, we're doing this before the squad's been announced. Is there any incomings uh, on loan from Warrington with this new partnership, or is it largely? Going to be the same sort of team that that featured up against. Yeah, the team may be different, but with the same squad. Yeah, we've got a we've got a couple of people we need to look at um, tonight during training. We've had a, a little bit of illness, but it's nothing nothing too concerning. We, we think we'll be um, very similar. Obviously, Jaden comes out, and we we welcome Josh to pull back. You mentioned there was going to be perhaps an update on Michael Lawrence. I think he was going for a, a test or a scan. Is, is there any news on Michael's absence? Yeah, really positive news for for Bruno. You know, it was looking like he he, he could have been a three. Bumper, which uh, you know was would have been really damaging to us, but he's uh, 
he's had some really positive news and he's responding well to treatment and rehab so we're, we're hopeful we'll get him back in, in three to four weeks. Jordan Barwinson said next week's game against York he was chomping at the bit is 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 he is, is that still looking like the plan or yeah for him for him to be back playing not necessarily you know in the, in the first team I had a great chat with, with Baldy this morning actually just in terms of putting a plan together and I think it's really important that now he's back training with the team he kind of has a say in, in terms of what his return to play looks like um so we'll be guided by him and, and the medical staff as well but all this worked extremely hard and you can see he's desperate to, to get back. It's important, I've been there myself, it's important you nail this this last little bit in terms of your return to play. Um, obviously we we'll want to see him play for our reserves um, beforehand just so we can we can look after him and manage his minutes. And then we'll be guided by Baldy um, and hopefully we'll have some competition for places as well so he gets another challenge there to, to work hard and fight for a spot back in our first team but I'm, I'm really happy for him, he's a, he's a great guy. Um, Really well liked by everyone, not just in the team, but throughout the club. Um, everyone cares about him and we're, we're looking forward to seeing him get his opportunity again. How close are Lee Gaskell and, and Evan Skirt? Yeah, Evan will be a couple of weeks off. He, he's going really well at the minute. Um, Gaskell's a bit more long term. He's going to be about six six to eight weeks, I think. With Lee Gaskell still being at length for time and the way John and Lee and John Davis are having a, a form in this sort of new look partnership, that must at least give you confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I think. JD's been fantastic since he's he's gone in there. He just says, "I'll play wherever you want me to play." We know it's not it's not something we want to do long term. We, we've actually missed him in the middle as well, or, or on an edge. But he's doing a great job for us now, and I think him and Jordy are playing really well together. Jordy's I think found found some rhythm within his performances. I think he's been really good the last two, um, and also not forgetting Tom Holmes. Tom Holmes is hopefully won't, won't be too far off. We haven't got a time frame on that, but he's um, you know he's training. He, there's a planning place for him there as well. And Touchwood, I'm really confident that we'll get to see him in a Bradford Bulls jersey again this year. Just on on Tom Holmes, obviously, will that still be dictated by by him and, and the medical advice? So, you know, from the the last statement Tom put out, we're still not sure what 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 is up with him. Yeah, that's it. We've got to be guided by him, but he's he's back training with us. There's a there's a plan in place. We've just got um, we just brought a new member of staff on board um, for SNC conditioner and ahead of performance so um, they'll work really closely with Tom and the rest of the injured boys to kind of get them up to speed it's an area that we've we've really missed um, we've worked hard to get to get someone in but it's been it's been difficult so I think that's only going to benefit us now with with those types of players you know they would be good plan in place for them and when they come back they'll be come back come back firing with it being the early part of the season we've got all this horrible inclement weather no secret Bradford suffered a, a heavy downpour this week so the pitch is going to be very, very watery and, 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 and heavy. Does that kind of go against, you know, having players like Aidan McGow and Mitch Super who can generate that ruck speed, that line speed, you know? I know they're jumping at the bit for the for the sandy tracks in June and July. Yeah, well, well first of all, credit to, to our ground staff and, and Ben, he's worked tremendously hard on the uh, on the pitch and it's looking good. We'll, we'll train on there tonight. So, um, look, in terms of the weather, it, it is what it is. It's going to be the same for both teams. I think I mentioned this after the Halifax game. I think everyone will prefer a fast track. You know, Featherstone wasn't wasn't great either. Um, so, but we we still managed to generate some some rock speed there, and that and that's what it's about. Take the conditions completely out of it. We've got a job to do. Um, and we know where we want to be good, and if we do that, you know, our, our key players will be able to to perform at their best.